Okay, hi. Thank you for being here and for wanting to see how to talk with code, how to paint with code. So we're going to paint the web with CSS, and it's in the title. We're actually going to paint using code, which is a fun thing to do, and I hope you enjoy it. So this is me. This is my self-portrait. I'm a front-end developer at Chillbill, which is a, a fintech company, and I'm also a coding artist. Why is artist in, uh, in, in exclamation points? Because, well, look at my self-portrait. Um, it's made with pure code, and every single graphic you will see in this presentation is actually made with just CSS. There are no images allowed in this presentation, so whenever you see something that it's done with pure CSS. Code is magic, at least for me. When I first started programming, the fir I remember the first program I did. It was a JavaScript function that printed out the first 10 digits of the Fibonacci sequence. I don't know if you remember the first line of programming that you ever did, but to me it felt like magic. It, I felt like God, like I had created something that, I wasn't, that wasn't previously there. And maybe if you think back on the first line of code that you ever did, it probably felt like this. In our day-to-day -day lives as developers, we sometimes forget this magic because we are in this rut of just getting to work, taking the newest issue, coding the feature, making a pull request, and ship the feature. This is our day-to-day -day lives, and the magic that we had previously gets lost. So I tried to combat that from the very beginning by making code magic again. And I made some things for myself that will keep me entertained and busy with code. Because whether you are a front-end developer, a graphic designer, or somebody working with the web, whether you build databases for a living, all of us that are sitting here that are developers or work with developers, we are all creators. We all make stuff for the web, and all of us aim to make the web a better, a more beautiful place. So never forget that you, even if it's the most mundane thing you do when coding, it's still creation and it's magic. Don't never forget that coding and creating is always magic. I personally love CSS. I could start it when CSS was a very new thing. I built my first websites on GeoCities and Neopets. So some people might remember these things the younger ones will ask themselves, what the hell is she talking about? And the older ones will think, whoa, I'm old because I had GeoCity sites too. It's been a while. And yeah, I first started when we had CSS only as inline CSS. And then later we had internal style sheets. And then a little bit later, again, we had external style sheets, which was the coolest thing. And I always aimed to learn more about CSS. And now it became so much more powerful by adding new features. And every time something new is added, I try and learn it immediately. So right now that we got grid, I'm all over that because it's a very cool thing. This is my first graphic that I did with just CSS. It is just plain CSS. Uh, I found an Instagram account that uh, features graphics of cactus. And I like cactus, so I thought, yeah, that's nice. I'm going to uh, follow that on Instagram. And one of these pictures was the one that you see here. And I thought, well, that looks easy to do. I'm just going to do it with CSS. I'm going to try this out. And I did. It took me about an hour or so. And I had no idea about transform skew at that point. I didn't know how to write uh, box shadows or gradients. So I went to the internet and copied out the, the uh, gradient code. And yeah, th this is what I made. And it was tons of fun. And I went to bed that night not knowing what I had created. I put it on the internet. And the next day, I got featured on CodePen. I had a couple of emails and features on Twitter. People were really like, whoa, this can be done with code. And this is how it all started. Also, I like to relax with code. 
This was made on a day where I was feeling really low and down, and I thought I would make something very easy, just plain shapes, nothing too much. And I wanted to make a windmill. Only problem was when it came to making the windmill turn around, I had no idea how to do that, because they would turn out really weirdly, and so I had to learn about transform origin. So what started out as me wanting to relax code for a little bit turned into a learning session of transform origin, and now I know about it. So it's always nice to find ways to learn new things. So, but now let's get into the nitty gritty and actually draw something because you're here to see code, I hope. We're going to build this little guy, which is a zombie head. And I'm going to show you all the bits and pieces that you need to know for building a zombie. I know zombies are kind of over now, but I hope you bear with me because I like them. So, yeah, let's get started with shapes. Because the first thing you need to do is actually map out this little head. The only shape we have in CSS right now is rectangles. So that's kind of boring, but we can do tons with rectangles. For example, if I can see my mouse here, we can make a border radius and make it into a circle. Yay, we made a circle. Uh, if you give it percentage values, it will round itself whole, but if you do, oops, that's too much. You can do rounded corners like that. You can also write a shorthand for that, like this. And now we have almost, just a second. So this would be the basic uh, shape of the zombie head that I just showed you. It's super easy to do, and it's quite fast. Border radius is incredibly powerful, and it's something that if you want to draw with code, something that you really want to look into, because you can create just awesome things with it. OK, another shape that we can do is triangles. Um, I just said we can't do anything but rectangles. So I lied a little bit, but actually I didn't, because a triangle is a rectangle without width and height, but with border. So here, all these elements in here, can you see my mouse here? All these elements in here are actually triangles. So what we can do is make some of them transparent. We can also skew them a little bit and make different shapes of triangles. So here we have three different triangles. And if you want only one of those, you just make the other ones transparent. And now you have a triangle. That's super awesome and very easy to do. I know it's weird. There should be a triangle thing in CSS, because this is kind of awkward to do. Uh, but right now, it's not the only way we can do clip path, but this is the fastest way that I have found to make a triangle in CSS. OK, so if we just draw shapes, this is what we, how far we can go now with our zombie head. We have two diff elements. One is the basic shape of the head, and one is the brain, which is hot pink, which is my favorite CSS color, in case you want to know. So pseudo elements is another really powerful and super cool thing in CSS. Pseudo elements are things like last child, nth of type, things that we use in day-to-day -day web development all the time. And they are very nice and make code more concise and make you use less classes in your markup. My favorite ones, though, because we're not drawing something useful here, we're drawing something that's actually fun. Uh, my favorite ones are before and after. So before and after are elements that you don't mark up, but they are there. Every single HTML element is secretly three elements in disguise. You have one that is marked up, and then you have one that's invisible to the markup, but is there. It's directly before and directly after your element. And you can style these. You can do all kinds of cool things with them. You can just not use them in JavaScript. So if you want to do stuff with before and after, do it with CSS. So we can do something useful with 
these tools that we have just learned with shapes, triangles, and pseudo elements, which is create tooltips. This is a one element tooltip, and I'm a huge fan of writing short and concise and semantic meaningful markup. So for my tooltips, I want to use only one element because this little arrow on the bottom, we can use a div element for that too, but it doesn't make sense to me because it's one thing, it's one tooltip. So it makes sense for the, for the user or for the browser to interpret only one element. And also, if you share your code with people, we want to make it meaningful to them and we want to keep it short and semantically correct. So this element is only one thing, so we mark up only one thing. And we can do that by making the shape and then the triangle as a pseudo element so that we only have one single item in our markup. So with before and after, we can now draw our eyes without having any additional markup. This is still only two div elements. The eyes are the before and after of the head. You can play around with Z index on uh, befores and after to sort them the way you want to. And we saved a lot of markup because we could have used two single divs for that or two list elements. But because we have pseudo elements, we don't do that because, yeah, keep markup short and concise, especially when you're drawing CSS. You kind of end up with a huge long markup list, and it's it's nicer and easier to just have pseudo elements because that's what we have them for. So let's talk about box shadow. Box shadow is a really, really cool and powerful thing when you're drawing. Uh, also, when you're on the web and painting your, your layout, we use box shadow all the time. And for the longest time, I had no idea how to write the syntax of a box shadow. And there are nice sites on the internet that create the code for you where you just say, I want this much box shadow. And, and it gives you the code so you can just copy it out. Same with gradients. But it's nice to know how to write it. And it's actually not that difficult. And I learned it by drawing. So my mouse. OK. So box shadow has two different ways to do it. One is the box shadow that is outside of an element, and one that is inset like you have it in Photoshop, for example. So the first one, or the first part of your box shadow syntax, moves the box shadow to the right. Second one moves it down. And the third one blurs. We don't want to blur. We want a little bit of a shadow under the eyes, because our zombie is a bit tired or dead, rather. So with the inset shadow, it's just the same. We move it to the right, we move it down, and we blur it. But we don't want to blur it, because it's an eyelid that we want to do. So now we have an eyelid with just box shadow. Box shadow is also animatable, which is super awesome. So we can do all kinds of weird things with it. So by now, we have learned everything we need to learn for creating the graphic that I showed you in the beginning. And if you just keep on building, then you will end up with awesome graphics. And you can just add on elements. And then you will end up with something like this, maybe. Also, I added some animations to this one. So it moves its head a little bit, and the drool is very disgusting, and it also blinks, if you watch it closely. Um, for animating these kinds of things, what I recommend, especially for the drool, never animate height unless you want to use your computer as a radiator. Because height animation, especially if it's infinite, will lead to re constant repainting. So if you don't want your computer to explode, please transform. Transform is a very powerful property, and I suggest you learn it, especially as a front-end developer, whether you are painting with code or whether you are just drawing layouts. Um, learning transform is really important and really cool. Uh, so here, I transformed the drool height. So I transformed x to make it bigger and smaller. And I transformed the rotation. So transform rotate makes the head go from left to right. 
and uh, the blinking is an animated box shadow. So by now, some of you are asking themselves, why am I doing this? Uh, and some of those people that have asked me in the past are sitting here, too, in this very room. And to this I say, why not? Because I like it. Because I learn from it. Because it's fun. I actually have a slide for that. It's fun. It's super amazing. I, I have tons of fun with it. It keeps the magic alive for me. Because as I said before, as developers, we tend to be in a rut of just taking the newest issue. But really, what we want to do is be enthusiastic about our coding and be enthusiastic about our jobs and about learning new things. Because especially in what we do, there are constantly new things coming out that we need to learn. And if we're not enthusiastic about code and our programming, about our programming styles, about new technologies, then we will at some point get left behind because there are always people enthusiastic and that want to learn. So it's the fun thing. This keeps the fun alive for me and maybe for some of you too. I learn new, new things uh, because, well, a new property comes out. The first thing I want to do is not use it in a real project because who does that? I want to abuse it and I want to do real things. I want to break it. I, I want to have a feel for it. So that's why I do all these things. Also, I learned a ton by making these graphics because when you try and learn things like that, you need to be really good at positioning. And as some of you might know, positioning with CSS can be a bit of a pain, or could be now that we have grid, it's a bit easier. And also, the community is very nice. Uh, a couple of years ago, I think two years ago or something, these kinds of graphics started popping out on CodePen. CodePen is a platform for sharing of code. You can put on code snippets, and other people can look at them, can comment on them, and can like them. Um, and it's a really nice community. You just put up your code and have other people look at it. They can fork it. They can comment on it. They can make it better for you. They can give you good tips. Or it's just a cool ego boost to see this little heart going up. Because, well, we all like to share things and have them publicized. And, and yeah, I enjoy that. Also, the community is very nice. We have some very nice people on CodePen. So, do we use CSS images in production? No. There might be sometimes uh, some images that you can use for projects. For me, it's always when I use more than three divs to paint, it is better to use an SVG. If you don't know what SVGs is, there's a scalable vector graphics. Uh, you can do everything that I just showed you with them. You can animate them. You can make them interactive. So these are the way to go when you are drawing more complex graphics. For me personally, I really can't deal with Illustrator. I'm a lot better with just coding the thing. I've never pre-designed them, because for whatever reason, Illustrator doesn't agree with me. Uh, so this is the way I do it. But I don't use these in productions. These are experiments to show off code and to learn new things and to have fun with them but not to use in real product, projects and products. Also, if you do something like that, ARIA label them so that they are become accessible for, or not accessible in that case, for screen readers, because that will confuse a screen reader. So what did we learn? We learned a couple of properties that are really useful for everybody. We learned that code is magic and should be, and how to keep ourselves entertained with it. So I encourage you to play, to just make ridiculous things, whether I inspired you to do something with CSS, or whether you build databases for a living. I don't know. Maybe there is something super cool that you can do with that. Make a game. Make something really useless. Make something that's fun for you and that entertains you. And show it off to the internet, because I can guarantee you people will like it, and people will have fun with it. So please, just I encourage you, play and do ridiculous things and share them and send them to me. I love looking at things. Also learn, keep on learning. Our community thrives on new technologies, on new skills. 
it will be better for your career if you keep up to date and if you learn awesome things. Maybe that a lot of people don't know. Maybe you can have a skill that nobody else has. Maybe it makes you distinct and different. And just because it's useless doesn't mean that it's a waste of time. I haven't wasted a second on making these graphics because I learned and because I had fun and because it gave the magic back to me. There are a couple of resources that I can recommend to you. As I mentioned before, CodePen uh, is this platform to show off code. And there is also a challenge called the CSS Daily Images, where you get sent uh, something to code for every single day. And it's something like a bear cub or a superhero or a monster that will inspire you to create graphics. There are also many different challenges if CSS is not your jam. Maybe you want to build websites. There is this challenge, uh, 30 websites in 30 days. Maybe you want to do that. It's a good portfolio builder, but it's also it keeps you entertained. And as I said before, it gets the magic back into coding. So I encourage you all to go out and create. Create something useless. Create something really outrageous. Create something ridiculous. Have fun with code. Don't just use it for work. Use it for your private stuff. Have fun with it. Build something super cool. And especially if you build CSS images, send them to me on Twitter. You can see my Twitter handle in the bottom corner. And show me your stuff. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Eva, for the talk. I think we have three minutes left. Let's just do one question. This is the first Q&A for today. <laughs> um, so let's just kick it off with one simple question. Um, CSS images versus SVG. Yeah, I mentioned it before in my talk for a little bit. CSS images are meant to be an experiment, and SVGs are meant to be used in production. SVGs can be built into your website in different ways like inline CSS or as an object or as an image. If you build it in as inline CSS, you can do all the same things that you can do with CSS images. So you can animate them. You can interact with them. And yeah, they are really useful. They are incredibly powerful. Uh, so I would use CSS images for my own things, just to show off that I can do it and to put them on CodePen. But for production, I would use SVGs. OK. One more question, maybe, and I think you have to show the code. Somebody asked, how do you do the cutoff in the top right corner of the zombie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a circle. Uh, and I cheated, uh, because the circle has the same color as the background color. And then I put a before in it. Uh, so the circle has overflow hidden. And I put a before in it and moved it outside a little bit. So that there is a little cutoff of the brain. I hope this was, I hope you understood whoever asked the question. Uh, if I can help further, please approach me and I will, I will show you the code if you want to. You want one more question or? Yeah. Okay. One last question. How can I get started doing CSS images? Uh, you can look into this daily CSS images challenge. And on CodePen, if you go on CodePen, you get really inspired. Also, what I like to do is go on Dribble. So D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E. Uh, and look at some graphics there and think, can I do them with code? Because you probably can. And then ask the creator first if you can actually use their graphic to transfer into code. Because yeah, copyright and stuff. Uh, but they will usually say yes. Uh, and create something fun. So yeah, and if you have any questions regarding uh, drawing with code, then just write me on Twitter. Cool. Thanks, Eva. Thank High you. five. <laughs> Make some noise for Eva. <laughs>